career. Um, so, first things first, the people. The people are, are far ruder than people in Malaysia. In fact, probably far ruder than most places I've been. It's like, they just, a, a couple of occasions I've picked up people's bags and carried their bags for them, like older people. Or I've held doors open and many things and probably one in ten to thank you and also they'll push past you they'll barge into you um and nobody says sorry or nobody says excuse me or whatever in any language you just don't say anything you just so they really are kind of quite like get out of my fucking way i'm too busy to be talking to you people you foreigners um and i do hate that one of the things i love about malaysia is the people are lovely um Public transport, though, is off the charts good. I have I have travel every day, um, and I'll look on the the map and it'll say you know hour and a half to two hours away by the underground, and I'm like yeah I'm down for that because it's great I don't mind it at all. It's relaxing for me being on the underground. Um, sometimes you have to stand. In fact, a lot of the time you have to stand, but I like the fact that. Um, so easy, it's reliable. It's, yeah, it's great, it takes you every little bit. And the other thing I really like, and I think this is, is like a super important point, is, so I don't know Seoul, and obviously I find Google Maps is absolutely pointless because if you put in an A to B destination thing, it won't give you a walk, it won't tell you how to walk there. It just doesn't do it. Um, there is a, a map, that will called Neva, but I haven't found that particularly helpful either. So what I've tended to do is I've just come up from A station, whichever one I've chosen, and I've just walked. And I've just walked around and had a, a really, you know, most days 10 to 20 thousand steps. And then eventually I'll see another station. I'll just go down that station, catch a train back to where I came from. It's a great way to do things because you just know you've got public transport. I've absolutely loved it. So transport is great. Food, some things are very expensive. Um, one of the biggest things for me as a solo traveler that doesn't speak the language is I find it very hard to go through the door of a lot of places because they look like they're set up for more than one person. And I am but one. And I see the prices and the prices are like, you know, Definitely not for, for food for one person. So I've kind of avoided a lot of places I would have liked to have tried if I had a local with me or had more people with me. So that's been kind of bad. But the food that I have had, not overall, not, not every meal, there's been some dodgy shit. But like most of the stuff I've had here, the quality has been amazing. And I discovered the hot yok. Um, which I think that's what it's called, which is kind of like a bready round, bready disc with the one I had was vegetables and mozzarella and fried and just like oh, the greatest thing. I mean, my favorite all time takeaway snack thing is what we call a spring roll in the UK. It's kind of like you see them like little roll of um, pastry with in the in. Malaysia or Singapore it tends to be like small little things with vegetables in. I would think they're mainly like frozen shop bought things, but I'm talking about English fish and chip shop, handmade, probably this size, fat as that, stuff full of vegetables, meat, prawns, just literally like everything they've got left, I think, at the end of the night, chucked in there. And um, they used to be a place in. Uh, just outside Exeter in the UK and I used to go to a fish and chip shop there on the way home and I would buy one of those things and you have to eat it when it was really hot and that would be just like the best takeaway thing anywhere, best street food if you like, anywhere. But this hot yolk, it's kind of very similar, I mean obviously different shape, disc shape, but very very similar, crispy filled with vegetables, anything it doesn't have is the meat, but it doesn't need it. Just 
to die for, honestly. And only the ones I had were 3,000 dong, which was, I don't know, not a lot. Not a lot. Absolutely to die for. So the food has been great. Um, I do love, I love the fashion. I love the style of the place. I love the way people dress. So the weather here is similar to England. I think they get, they get the hot, they get the cold, they get the wet, get it all. Whereas in Malaysia, it's hot as balls, hot as balls, hot as balls, even though it's wet. So, you know, in, the, in Malaysia, I'm in shirt and shorts mainly, and that's it, because there's just no point. Um, here, there's so many different styles, and they have the whole sort of style thing going on. The sad thing here is this is also a crazy religious country. There were churches everywhere, and I went to Seoul Station the other day, and literally there were four different, like, areas set up with crazes there with microphones piss poor sound systems but like blowing out sound way too loud so it's it's all um distorted and uh, it's just all old people really just like all with their little sashes on and behind things telling me that god will do this and jesus will do that and there and they're all just howling they can't sing they were howling these whatever like, religious messages they were spitting out and it's just like ugh, can't get away from religion fucking it ugh. and you can't get away from religious crazes you know practice your religion fine but just let other people be they have to force it down me so i'm walking around a train st or walking around outside a train station every fucking 50 meters i've got you twats screaming at me through your microphones my favorite one though was kind of like a there was an area with a load of seats, probably 20, maybe 20 meters long, load of seats, and then they'd ribboned it off. So that, it's like the lunatics were all trapped in the asylum while the people were singing at them. That made me smile. No, it didn't, I hate it. Um, so yeah, so, so Korea is definitely one of the favorite places I've visited, definitely. Um, Baseball. If I lived here, I would probably go to baseball every week. Um, I've chosen my team. I, I, I firmly believe you can only support a team if, you, if you've actually seen them play live. The first team I saw play live here was uh, Dusan Bears. So that's my team. The second team I went to watch was SSG Landers. That was a different ground, but that was the second team. So first team I watched, therefore they are my team, Dusan Bears. And... Um, yeah, if I lived in, if I lived in Korea, I would go every week. Freaking love it. I just love the atmosphere. It actually brings a smile and a tear to my eye, really, because it's just pure joy. It's not about the sport. It's not like football where it's life or death or it seems like life or death. No one seems to care if they're winning or losing. They're just having a great time. And the food and the drink's amazing. The whole experience is amazing. I'd love to go to, to watch JDT in Johor. But just even the thought of just having to drive there and then park and then like fight the way in for the because there's not many ways in to the parking area and then you have to park and then you've got to get in there it's like fuck that going to the baseballs literally i get at the station for Doosan, come straight up from the underground station and there's the ground there's the stadium you buy the ticket and the door straight in i mean it's just so easy and I'd like to go and watch JDT, but I just can't be bothered with that whole process, having to buy the tickets in advance and then having to fight to park and blech. No. So yeah, so I absolutely adored the baseball. I absolutely adored it. I've watched baseball in America. I watched uh, LA Dodgers and I did love it. But the difference between American baseball and Korean baseball, I'm not necessarily talking about the quality of the game, although I suspect there's probably not a lot of difference is the just the whole atmosphere it is just a non-stop dance-a-thon sing-a-thon cheer-a-thon and in america it's just not it's just people sort of fairly quiet sitting there drinking eating fairly bored um, whereas yeah baseball here is just another level of awesome the only other place i'd like to watch baseball is in japan as well it looks the same kind of thing there it looks like it's like a a great great experience as well if I have to compare countries, I don't like to compare, but if I have to compare countries, we're kind of now, I think, still in Asia. 
we have Taiwan as the top. Best place to visit, best people, best food. Just loved it. Loved it. I think this comes probably just below, just below. Um, Thailand and Malaysia I love. But the difference is the temperature. That, that heat makes it so much harder. So like I've been walking around every day. If I do that in Malaysia or Thailand, it absolutely drains me. So it's more like for every day I do, I have to do another day of recovery. I, I've not done enough in Hong Kong and Macau. I love them both, but I haven't really, it's a long time ago and I haven't really spent enough time in either of them to really, but they were both great places. Um, I love Singapore, but I mean, if you, if you take, this is very similar to Singapore. The difference is it's so much bigger and it has so much more going on. So Singapore to me would be way below this because just because of size. Being able to come here and there's so much more to do, more to see. Yeah, um, Singapore would be, you'd go stir crazy after a while for sure. This is that much better. Um, so there you go. I love Korea, it's official. And I'll probably never come back again because it's very expensive for a poor person like me. So take care.